I have a beehive here mm -hmm. that has recently swarmed. And when the bees are ready to swarm, they'll make queen cells. And just prior to the queen hatching, a new queen hatching, the old queen leaves with half the colony. And that's basically what we just looked at in our, our other inspection is a swarm. I've got a couple swarms that we've stuck away here. And this year, at least in Northern Virginia, DC area, uh, it's been swarm central. There's been swarms like crazy because we had a warm winter and a warm spring and we've got this beautiful flow going on. So it's, it's all going on. So what I wanna do is check this beehive. One, to see what's going on in the honey supers because I don't want uh, I don't want to miss out on, on the honey flow. So I want to make sure they're putting honey away, which is good. Uh, I also want to see if I've got a queen who's laying eggs because it's been about 10 days since I think that they swarm. Uh, so I'd have to check my notes. But anyway, we're going to check out and see what's going on inside this beehive. So what do I expect to see? I expect to see my honey supers filling nicely. Uh, at least drawing out any damaged comb because I used comb from last year. And then I want to see uh, either queen cells that may have hatched um, or possibly even find a queen in here or, you know, with any luck, we'll see some eggs. So let's go ahead and take a look. So my smoker has been lit now for easily an hour. And I'm just going to give them a little puff. Now on this particular beehive, I've got a couple of things that I'm playing with. I've got this sensor here. This sensor tests weather and humidity, and I also have a scale. I've got a scale on it, which is kind of cool because it tells me when they're packing in the nectar that uh, this, things are going on. I thought the other day I had made an amazing amount of honey, and then I realized I just stacked a couple of rocks up there, and uh, that wasn't exactly a fair measurement. Okay, so this beehive has uh, two deeps, which is all the brood chamber. And these two blue boxes are honey supers, and this is just where excess honey goes. All right, so a good sign is I see some bees up here right away. I'm just going to give them a little bit of a puff. Now the bees glue everything together, and that's why you need a hive tool. Now you see in this super, there's some frames in here that are not drawn out. And this super has nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine frames that are equally spaced, intentionally creating a bit of bee space violation. So the bees draw that honeycomb out a little bit further, making it easier to extract later and easier to, or the, the cells are a little bit deeper so the queen won't be prone to, to uh, lay eggs in there. Now, if you see when I pulled my, my super off, I'm just gonna set it on its side like that. It's completely fine. There's uh, I don't wanna lay it down flat because I'd end up squishing more bees. Anytime I open a box, I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a puff. The bees immediately go back down into the, to the hive. Now, I just want to check what's going on with these frames here. These are my honey frames. And so I'm going to use this tool here. I always use two tools in conjunction. This is called a frame lifter, and I'm just going to lift it right up. i got to separate this. I'm just going to pull it right up and see what's going on. Okay. You see here, this is all honey, honey, and they're filling this with nectar. Now, I had a lot of brood in this super, and I had to um, make sure the queen was below, and then I put a honey uh, a queen excluder on, and all the bees, they hatched out, and they went down. Yeah, they're doing great. All this is capped honey. So this, this super is about ready to go. It's great, looking great. So this is very good news for me. So that's all I really wanted to see in this super. Clear out some of those bees. Now let's look what's going on in the brood chamber. Oh, this is quite heavy because it's full of honey. All right. So if you look in here, you see there's plenty of bees. 
Oh, this is just a little bit of excess comb. And you can scrape that right off just to keep your frames clean. And it also is a little bit of less wear and tear on your frames because the frames that were directly above these will end up kind of getting stuck. And it causes more pressure when you're trying to get your frames apart. And once again, I'm gonna keep this wax here and I'll put it in, even if I don't want it, I'm just gonna put it in a baggie and throw it out and not just throw it on the ground. But I'll use it. Some of you might find that this all turns into a lip balm. Okay, so I've got, I count my frames from left to right, one through 10. I'm gonna go ahead and separate these two right here. I'm gonna pull out number two. You see, this is a piece of black foundation they haven't drawn out. When they swarm, I end up giving them a little bit of extra space. Okay, and I'm just gonna set this guy right here. Let's see what's going on. One thing that we have to be concerned with when bees swarm, I see a lot of drones. You see, this is a lot of pollen. This area right here, it looks like wet pollen is called bee bread. And it's basically honey or pollen and nectar that the bees uh, make and they feed their babies. It, it helps them create royal jelly. There's a queen cup, no big deal. You see them all the time. And here's some brood that's gonna be hatching out and I'm looking around for some eggs and I don't see any yet. But I also don't see any queen cells, which is good. Sometimes when bees swarm, since they don't have any uh, babies to take care of, they'll fill up every little area with nectar. And so it's important that we make sure that during this time where the queen, a young virgin queen is developing and she'll go on her mating flights, that there's room for her when she's ready to start laying eggs. And what I'm trying to do is hold this so the light gets to the very bottom of the cells so I can see if there's any eggs down there. And I do not see any eggs. But here, look at this little fuzzy bee. That's a little baby. When they come out, they're fuzzy. Here's one hatching. All right, so all I really do is giving them a quick look. Here you see some, oh, here's a queen cell. But you see here, if you look very closely on the, on the outside of this queen cell, <clears throat> it's been opened up. So you see right here, this was a queen cell, it's vertical, and it's been ripped open from the side. That means her sister hatched out, tore it open, and killed her. There can only be one. What we have here is some drone brood, just randomly spaced out, nothing to worry about there. Some of these, here's a queen cell that had hatched. So I know that they had at least one queen that hatched out and was healthy enough to kill her sister. Now all I need to do is wait for her to mate and start laying eggs. And that is usually a two week process from the time the queen hatches to the time you start seeing eggs. You shouldn't be concerned about things like this. This right here is drone. Remember drone comb and uh, drone brood and worker brood is always horizontal. Queen cells like this is always vertical. I don't want another queen in there. So Oh boy. So these are all queens. This one's hatched. This one's been ripped apart. And I don't want these queens in here. Oh, there's a queen, she's alive. Take care. 
There's a virgin queen. Straight out of the cell. Come here, you. <laughs> this is why, my friends, we always have our little queen cage. So there, there's a virgin queen just hatched. Just like that one, probably one in here too. What you can do with these queen cells is very gently cut them out. See, she's trying to get out. This queen is gonna hatch today. But I can take this queen cell and install it in another beehive that is queenless and they'll accept her. There's another one. So I'm removing these because I don't want them in this particular hive. Sometimes they can be sneaky. Looky here. This one is in there too. That's a queen cell. You see it? A lot going on in here. And more. Well, this one's already been ripped open and that queen is, oh, no, it's not. She's about to hatch too. Great. <laughs> I need more cages. See, all these have hatched. There goes another one. Queens everywhere. What will often happen is if you have a queen hatch and then a couple days later another one, you can very easily have more swarms and swarms with virgin queens. And we don't want that. And all these queens were out there about the same day. Because they're all mature and hatching today. Take 16 days for a queen to go from an egg to hatching. So I already saw one virgin queen escape down there. We'll see what happens. Hopefully they don't swarm. I'm going to take my honey super that was not completely full and put it underneath the one that is more full. We have a tool. that evenly spaces your, your frames from 10 frame to nine. Now, because we have so much excitement today, I have these nukes that are queenless. Well, they were queenless. So I'm going to give this a quick look to see if there's a queen in here. So all I'm looking for is eggs. 
Sometimes you can see a queen pop out at you. But right now all I'm looking for is eggs. I'm just gonna give these a little shake so I can see the comb. So here's a couple of queen cups, but there's nothing in them. Oh wait, there's an egg. So cool. If I see an egg, I've got a queen. I think for more eggs. So when you see eggs, it's why it's important that you see eggs and not necessarily the queen, is because an egg is always an egg for three days. This is the leftover of an old queen cell. Ouch. There's a stinger embedded in my finger. So this is what's left of an old queen cup, a queen cell. But I don't see any eggs. So an egg is an egg for three days, always, period. And that's why it's very important that you look for eggs when you're doing your inspection, because if you see eggs, you'll know that you've had a queen in the last three days. And sometimes when it's hard to see, you really need to whip out a flashlight. But I still don't see any eggs in here. So just because a queen hatches, and there certainly has been a queen hatch here, a lot of things can happen. She can get eaten by a bird or a, another bug, a dragonfly, a hornet. She could get lost on her mating flights, never come home. She could get in a fight with another queen, be damaged. A lot of things can happen. So what I'm gonna do is take a little piece of comb like that. I'm gonna take the queen cell that's just about to hatch. I'm gonna set it right in there. There. So I'm gonna set that queen cell so she will hatch out in here. And we'll see if there's a queen in here who may not be laying eggs yet. Well, they'll just kill her as soon as she hatches. But if there's not a queen in there, they'll accept her. And that's that. Fun with queens. And each one of these has a queen in it that's just about to hatch. Now this queen right here, she's nice looking, but I can't just throw her into a beehive because they'll kill her. So I have a little cage that I'll stick her onto a piece of honeycomb or a queen cage just like when we install the package and let the bees get to know her first. And then uh, she'll certainly have to still go mate and stuff, but I can't just release a queen into a colony because they'll kill her. And so, so that's it. And so what I'll do is uh, I'll take this one, I'll put her in a little cage, put her into another colony. I've got several nukes here that don't have any queens. And then uh, what I'll do is uh, let her go ahead and establish herself, release her in a day or so after I see that she's been accepted as a virgin queen. And then she'll go mate and she'll come back and she'll be the new queen of the castle. And that's it. And so that's how we're going to do our inspections. So a couple of key points. Always uh, ensure that your bee space is nice and tight when you close up your stuff. Always uh, inspect your frames directly over top of your beehives. This way, if you drop anybody, speci specifically your queen, she goes into the, to the beehive, not into the grass. Um, give them a little bit of smoke. Have your smoke handy. Uh, always have your protective equipment with you 
even if you choose not to wear it because things can head south pretty quick. So you always want to have it available even if you don't wear it all the time. So that's that. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at the Bee Store. We're open uh, Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 7 and Sundays from 10 to 4. And we are also offering our classes and we're going to start doing them online. So you can always check out some of our classes online. All right, that's it. Thanks.